Hello and welcome to the Sally Tomato YouTube channel. Here at Sally Tomato we really enjoy bringing you tutorials that give you knowledge and help you with projects but also inspire you. Join me for an easy to sew cold weather accessory using our Muffy pattern. I think you're really going to enjoy making this muff pattern. It's designed by Jamie, Jess's business partner, and he knows a lot about cold weather. So he made sure you could wear this muff either around your waist with an adjustable strap to wear over your shoulder. And the best part is a zippered pocket where you can have all your essentials right with you. Be sure to purchase the pattern before beginning your project. The pattern and supplies can be purchased from our website or request them at your local quilt shop. We encourage you to shop local whenever you can. I'm sure you're ready to get started, but remember you can always pause the video as we progress. That way we can sew at your pace so gather your fabrics, cut out those pattern pieces, get a few supplies, and let's get started. Before beginning, review the materials and supplies section on the back of the pattern, and that includes a list of helpful notions. Muffy is generously sized, which is especially nice if you're using a cozy, deep piled faux fur. You'll need a main fabric. You'll cut your exterior, belt loops, adjustable strap. You'll also need contrast fabric, and be sure to select a nice warm one. Just a quick note, before you're cutting all your pieces out, the contrast, if you're using a faux fur or fabric, make sure that the direction or nap of the fibers are going in the direction that you wish. So it's best if the nap on the fabric is going with the short measurement of your pieces and then also a lining for your pocket and then an optional addition is insole bright. Then another note is you certainly could add a layer of insole bright or a needle felted batting that would give additional warmth to your muff once it's finished. We're ready to begin by preparing and attaching the pocket. With right sides up, align the zipper to the right side of the bottom edge of your lining piece. Then you're going to sew a 3 8 inch seam allowance along the edge of the zipper tape, just like I've done here, and then take a few minutes to press the lining away from the zipper. Put the zipper and the pocket aside for the moment, and on the top edge of the wrong side of your main piece A, mark vertical lines, in from the opposite long edges and then also mark a horizontal line down from the top edge between those vertical lines. You're creating an indent. Then cut out the indent following your marked lines. Now with piece A and the zipper right sides up, place piece A over the zipper centering the indent along the zipper edge. You'll align the top edge of the zipper tape to the top edge of your piece A and then go to your sewing machine and you'll top stitch all three edges of the indent with a narrow eighth inch allowance. All right, now flip the pieces over and you're going to fold piece D up so the pocket is right sides together and the short raw edge is aligned to the top edge of the zipper. Base the layers in place along the zipper edge beginning and ending just at the indent top stitching. Then you're going to move piece A out of the way and align the raw side edges of the pocket and sew the pocket sides together with a quarter inch allowance. You'll sew both the right and left edges of your pocket. Now is the perfect time to add that optional layer of insole bright to the underside of your piece A. So the pocket is going to be between piece A and the insole bright layer. You'll go to your machine and baste the layers in place around the outer edges of piece A with a quarter inch allowance. Let's move on to the belt loops. Press each long edge of your piece B belt loop to the center of the wrong side. Place a piece of double-sided basting tape centered along the length of piece B to help hold the long raw edges together in the center. 
then you're going to go to your sewing machine and top stitch an eighth inch from each fold and then at the work table we're going to sub cut into five lengths and there will be a little left over the dimension is listed in your pattern now on the right side of piece a we're going to mark two marks measured up from the bottom edge at the center and be sure to refer to your pattern for the exact measurements we're also going to mark on the right and left of center two sets of marks again all measured up from the bottom edge and then out from center so you'll have a total of 10 markings now with right sides up, center the bottom raw end of a piece B, that's a belt loop, on the bottom placement mark. And I'm going to start at the left most marks. Top stitch an eighth inch and a quarter inch from that raw end and be sure to back stitch for security. Slip one D-ring onto the belt loop then position the top end of the belt loop on the mark directly above and you're going to top stitch in place as you notice I have the D-rings on the first and last belt loop with the belt loops attached but now we're ready to assemble the muff so on the right side of your piece A mark a line using removable pen or chalk that's in from each long edge. And then with right sides together, align the long edge of your pieces C to the marked lines. And I'm double checking to make sure that the nap of my fabric is going away from my piece A or my main fabric. So double check yours. Now top stitch a wide seam allowance and I have a piece of washi tape on my machine bed so I know the exact measurement from the edge of your piece A. And be sure to refer to your pattern for that wider seam allowance. Using a nonstick needle is really helpful when you're sewing bonded faux fur fabric like the fabric I have. And we're going to repeat this step to attach the remaining piece C to our opposite long edge of piece A. With right sides together, align the raw long edges of your pieces C and sew them together with a 3 8 inch seam allowance. Now we're going to turn the muff right side out with raw edges aligned. And now with the main piece A right sides together, we're going to align the raw edges. Hold the layers together with sewing clips and if you have no Insulbrite layer holding the pocket in place, check that the pocket is not going to get caught in this last seam. You're going to sew this last seam again with a 3 8 inch seam allowance and then turn the muff right side out so the fur is on the inside. Here's where a zipper foot or a narrow foot is essential. You need to sew near the zipper coil, but also check that the zipper pull is out of the way as you're sewing. If you've added Insulbrite, sew the main and the Insulbrite edges right sides together, keeping piece C edges out of the way. Then go back and align the piece C edges wrong sides together and sew beginning and ending as close as possible to the previous seam. Thread one end of the webbing through both D-rings. Fold two inches to the underside and then top stitch a one inch long box with an X inside the box to secure the end in place. Thread the belt through the loops on the muff, then through the D-rings. Loop the belt over one D-ring and then through the next D-ring. For additional versatility, use your contrast pieces E to add an adjustable strap. Visit youtube.com backslash Sally Tomato for a video tutorial to create the strap. 
Keep your essentials in the zipper pocket or slip in a hand warming heat pack. I hope you enjoy your new accessory as the cold weather approaches. Jamie's design is perfect for outdoor sporting events during the cooler months into the winter, but also great for just running around town running errands. Be sure to leave any suggestions or comments below and we'll try to answer any of your questions that you might have. We encourage you to share photos of your completed projects using hashtag Sally Tomato and hashtag Muffy Pattern on social media. Visit our website for more mini patterns. They're designed for all skill levels and are intended to be a quick sew project. I think Muffy would make a great birthday or holiday gift as well. Thank you, Jamie, for bringing us this great hand warming project and thank you for watching and sewing with me today. I hope you enjoy your new accessory and stay warm. So until next time and our next tutorial, have a great making day. If you found this tutorial helpful, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe on our YouTube channel so you'll know when a new video is here.